first we want to ask you about uh, your goals. You know, you have a little time to think about it. You're, you'll be taking over for 2012, correct? And we want to know what your focus will be during your presidential year. There's several things that I want to focus on, and I'll, so I'll address that first, and then sure. I'll tell you what my overall goal is. Certainly. I'm interested in really starting a leadership development initiative for the association. And the way I want to do that is to first understand all of what ALA is doing, the different units, particularly the divisions, and bringing all that information together because that will tell us the kind of foundation that we have. Then I also want to look at what other associations like ALA have done, and I mean particularly not-for-profit associations, to see where there might be some models, some ideas there. And then I'd like to bring together a group of individuals who would contribute their best thinking to what is it that could be an effective ALA-wide initiative. I'm also interested in continuing to support all of the good work that's been done in the advocacy area. And I'm especially interested in looking at ways that we can collaborate across the association to deal with what I see to be serious threats, particularly to school libraries, but also to public, area, public libraries in different parts of the country. And I would like to position ALA to be the association that really makes the case for the value of libraries of all types across the country. And my overall goal is to make sure that at the end of my three years that we have really achieved a time in this country where people understand the value and contribution of libraries. I'm also interested in supporting a look at where we're contributing internationally and identifying areas where we can strengthen the current relationships that we have, but also where ALA can partner more across the globe, around the globe, I should say, and we can look at how we can contribute to and benefit from library development internationally. Big agenda. Big agenda. Now, when you talk about leadership, is this piggybacking on the emerging leaders? Is, is that the kind of thing that you're talking about when you say leadership? Throughout my career, and I started doing the kind of leadership development work that I've been doing, um, and I probably started that, it's safe to say, in the mid-1980s in a serious way. So I began doing leadership development in the field before there were programs such as we have today. We have a number of them mm -hmm. in state associations as well as within ALA. Emerging leaders would be one piece of it, and I've been very proud to be one of the co-chairs of that initiative for Leslie Berger. And I've watched almost 500 people come through that program, and a number of them move very quickly to contributing in the association. So that would be one piece of it. But I also think we would benefit from having a program that would really prepare people at different points in their career for the kind of leadership work that they might need to do at that stage. So both the early and emerging, but also the more experienced. Let's talk about voter turnout. I think I've asked every president that question um, for the last several years. It's still extremely low. What is it that you think we can do to increase interest in, in voting for the leadership of the association? I think it's a question, and this may sound you know, out of bounds, but I think it's a question we might start to put to the membership mm -hmm. and discover what some of the barriers might be. I can tell you, in my experience, I had several people come to me and apologize for not being able to vote because they hadn't realized that if they didn't renew their dues at a certain point, they were going to be blocked from being able to vote. I believe there's even data now that shows that some people log on and start the process and they don't finish it, so they end up not being able to vote. And it may be one of those situations that we really can't change. It, it may be that what we're going to have to do is just settle for the fact that you know, we do everything to promote the voting. Messages go out. Sue Stroyan and I sent messages to people. I had one person write back to me and say, you've lost my vote. And I followed up and I asked why, and he said, well, because the message that you sent to me was like spam. So I, I, I think we'd really have to do some deeper inquiry to understand what is keeping people from voting. Well, that brings me to the point of something that's been discussed uh, during annual conference, and that's the Future Perfect Report and the recommendations, which brought a lot of people from council who had never spoken before up 
Um, and, and I'm sure the discussion will continue into your presidency about this report. Um, do you think that the, their recommendations from this group of fairly young librarians is the real future for ALA? I know from my work with emerging leaders mm -hmm. and from my work with others who are fairly new to the profession that there is a very serious interest in changing some of this association to make it easier for people to be involved and to contribute and to, as the Emerging Leaders Group this past Friday said, really reduce the bureaucracy that we find ourselves in. There also are not just new or younger members who are interested in change, some of the more seasoned people are interested in change because there is an increasing interest in having us reduce the focus on the, um, the committee structure and really moving more to places where they can do meaningful work around the hot button issues and really move that work forward. And we're doing some of that. I just came from the executive board where the checklist that had been developed by the committee on ad advocacy was reviewed. And that was done on a very fast track, but it required real commitment and a lot of time and effort on the part of the people involved. I think the Future Perfect Task Force report, and I think it was brilliant that they chose that name. Yes. I think it lays a really strong foundation for some serious rethinking. But for me, sitting in on the presentation yesterday, it wasn't only the content of that report that gave me hope for the future of this association, it was the way council addressed that report. It was a very balanced conversation, and people who spoke to it, who identified issues, did so in a very constructive way. So it's that report, it's the council effectiveness report, it's the work that's been underway to look in a very hard way about the whole way that we handle finances, and it's the work of the Young Librarians Task Force, or I think it was actually called the Young Librarians Working Group. All of these are formal pieces that are coming together that I think are gonna help us address a number of the concerns and issues that the whole membership has. And I think you're right, because I have seen in the past where reports such as this would, would create great controversy, they would, the people presenting would be attacked and they would never come back. That's right. But, and the, the conversation this time was, uh, the tone was totally different. So I, I believe that you're correct in that. In the work I do as a consultant, one of the terms I sometimes use is organizational maturity. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I'm seeing in this organization. There are so many more people now who are very serious about having an effective association mm -hmm. and thinking very carefully about how they can manage themselves to contribute to having an effective organization. Now you address some of this, advocacy, diversity, equal access, privatization. These are continuing things that we're hearing throughout the association on every level. Oh, what will your presidency bring in those areas? And you did address some of this earlier. I think what I will bring to this is a deep interest in having an inclusive approach to this. I, there are so many talented people in this association who are already contributing. I want to bring even more individuals into this. I believe that diversity is one of our core values, but it's more an aspirational value. Mm -hmm. So I want to continue on the work that will be done in Molly Raphael's presidency to not only achieve greater diversity, but I like the use of the term inclusion or inc inclusivity mm -hmm. as well as diversity. I personally want to see us start to look for different language beyond the use of the term advocacy. Mm -hmm. and, and what I have found most effective is to talk in terms of what it is that libraries and the people who work in libraries do to make a difference in their communities. Uh, bringing those two together, I want us to look across the different types of libraries and see that we're partnering, that school librarians, public librarians, and academic librarians, and others in this association are partnering to look at how it is that we can have engagement in our communities with the stakeholders as well as the people whom we're serving to ensure that what I believe to be the library's role, that is, it is the central place where we are supporting democracy and democratic values. I think that is, it's really important work for us to do cutting across the different types of libraries. My whole career has been focused on education and learning. And while my work has been devoted to doing that within the profession, I'm always conscious that I'm working with people who are fostering education and lifelong learning 
for the people of this country. And the people of this country are becoming increasingly diverse. And it's presenting challenges to us, but I also think it's creating opportunities, again, for us to demonstrate the value and the role and the contribution of libraries and the people who work at libraries. Any final word for members, or those who may be potential members watching uh, uh, this video? Two other things occurred to me as I was responding to your questions, and I think I stressed the first one in the campaign. I really believe deep in my heart, ALA is the profession that is best positioned to deal with the issues and to prepare those of us in the profession to deal with the issues on the local level. And I believe the ALA strategic plan is an excellent framework for us to do the work that we need to do. And if we view that strategic plan as a framework for not just positioning ALA as an association, but for guiding us in how we're going to foster more community engagement and really become understood as a vital force within our communities as well as in this country. I think that's certainly work I want to lead, and I'm optimistic that we'll be able to make good progress in the next three years. Well, thank you very much for the thank opportunity you. to talk to you, and good luck on all of the good things that you plan on doing.